Praise God. So if you are a guest tonight, and if it is your first time, hopefully we have helped inspire some thoughts in you that you wonder what you got yourself into. But you are in very good company because the high percentage of people in this place this evening had the same experience. So praise God. But in all sincerity, we welcome you tonight. If you are a guest, we are very glad to have you in service with us tonight. If you're watching online tonight, wherever you're watching from, pray that you are blessed by what's already happened and whatever else may happen in this service. In Jesus' name, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs, I hope this section over here can focus on the preaching and not worry about the sky falling or something. (laughs) Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 24. Proverbs 11, 24. Actually, before I do that, let me just also say, to uh, everyone that was here yesterday for the safety security seminar, I just want to say thank you very much for coming and being a part of that day. A lot of folks gave up pretty much their whole day yesterday to come and be a part of helping to plan and work on making sure that we are doing our due diligence to care for you. And, um, While we believe and have faith that God is going to protect us, we also have a responsibility to do our part. And so there was lots of uh, work and effort yesterday. And so again, to all of you that were here yesterday, thank you very, very much for giving up your Saturday and coming and being a part. I pray God blesses you not only for yesterday, but also for your love and burden and commitment to his cause. Praise God. Proverbs 11, verse 24. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. I am I do not have ADD. But I am extremely distracted in this moment. I just have to tell you. All you squirrel folks must be going crazy right now. You got no idea I'm up here reading, talking. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. You know what it is? Light? Y'all turn these lights off for a second, see if it's a light. We need a spirit of discernment right now. Somebody get a gift working. Come on. Oh, my word. <laughs> Proverbs eleven twenty four. There is that distracteth, and yet continueth. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. I really feel feel like I got a message, but I'm about to dismiss you. Oh, my goodness. Let's try this again. There is that scattereth. I'm going to have to preach real loud this whole night so I can't hear that sound anymore. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Hallelujah. I think we need to stop the video, stop the recording, erase all that, and now we'll start over. Proverbs 11, 24. 
There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. There is that scattereth, but increases. But then there is that holds on, but tends to poverty. The liberal soul. Now this is not talking about politics. Just to be clear, this is not this is nothing to do with politics. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And it's this last half of this verse that I particularly want to draw your attention to. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. The Living Bible says it this way, it is possible to give away and become richer. It is also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be rich. How? By watering others, he waters himself. The Message Bible. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped. Lastly, the New Living Translation says it this way, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Now I want you to hear. I, 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 wish, I wish you could see it, but I don't think we have the New Living Translation. I love this next one. I love the way the New Living Translation says this. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Father, thank you for your presence in this place tonight. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. Thank you for what you have done here already. I truly believe, God, that your miraculous power has operated in this service. And I anticipate, God, hearing testimonies of what you have done tonight. God, I also believe that you would like to speak to us tonight a word from you. So I trust you right now that you would give us ears to hear what you would say, hearts to receive. Let there be faith that is mixed with your word tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. We live in, in a time in which there is more selfishness than there has ever been. We live in more of a self-centered world than we have ever lived in before. We live in a world that makes it more about me, myself, and I than has ever been before. It's not an uncommon thing, you know, of other situations it's happened in, but I just happened to see a, a clip this afternoon of one of the towns someplace in the Carolinas where the, where the Hurricane Florence had hit, and there was a, I think it was a CVS store that people were just absolutely going crazy hauling stuff out of. The, the reporter, it was looked like just a, no, a local news station, and the reporter was actually trying to go up to some of the looters and say, you know you're looting, you know that's stealing, you know that's illegal. They didn't care. 
This was about a moment for me to get something for myself. And we're living in a world that makes it all about me. We're living in a world where everything revolves around ourselves. And we're living in a world that is more unhappy than it's ever been. We're living amongst people that are more dissatisfied because the wise man said, if you try to hang on, if you try to hold on to it, you actually will lose it. The kingdom of God, the word of God is full of things that to the natural mind do not make sense at all. The Bible says if you want to save your life, then you need to lose it. But the way to lose your life is actually to try to save it. You try to hang on to your world. You try to control your world. You try to plan everything out and do everything you want to do the way you want to do it. And you can rest assured it's not going to work out. I I realize if you're like me and some of you, maybe you're a better person than I am and you've never had this challenge, but... I've got to admit, at times I've thought, you know what, I think I could be the first person to get a couple million dollars and be content. Because we all think if we had just a little bit more, we'd be happy. We all think if we got just a little more, or if we had what they had, and lived where they lived, and wore what they wore, and went on vacation where they went on vacation, that we would be happy. And I realize not having the chance to experience that leaves perhaps a bit of doubt, but just go pay a little more attention in the checkout line next time you go in the grocery store. If money can buy happiness, if money can buy happiness... Why is it that those that have the most are the ones that fill the tabloids with addiction and alcohol problems and marriages and they're on their third or their fourth wife? Why is it? Because when you hang on, when you hold on, you actually lose. It is possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. The key is you actually can increase by scattering. There is increase that comes by scattering. There is increase that comes by taking what you have and giving. I wonder if part of, and I'm sure this is not the only reason and perhaps it's not even at the top of the list, but I wonder if one of the reasons that Christianity is on the downturn and a church attendance is on the downturn, I wonder if it's because if you listen carefully, you can listen to the majority of what is preached in a church is now about me as an individual. How can I have better? How can I get better? How can I have more? How can I be happier? I uh, I I came across I was I was looking up something on YouTube or actually I think I had a message playing on YouTube and one of the links caught my eye and uh, I I clicked on it and it was a guy um, and and it was it was uh, he was, was apparently some kind of TV show talk show type deal and and he was he was um the, the kind of the heading please don't go look this up because I will tell you there was words that were used that you shouldn't listen to but I I I was also quite enthralled by what this guy was doing so my apologies um just being honest with you whatever but the 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 the, the basic theme was Something along the lines of last week in TV preachers or something like that. I, I've heard something I have never heard before. And the fact that this guy gets away with this blows my mind. He, he told people, Brother Kimbrell 
you need to get your wife to hold you up there for a moment because you may fall over on this one. He was telling people, if you want to get out of credit card debt, you got credit card debt and you want to get out of it, you use your credit card for a $1,000 seed offering and God was going to work to turn that around to pay your credit card off. I got to be honest, how in the world the people, and, and it was kind of a choir or something sitting behind him, how in the world those people did not get up off that stage and have a mass exodus out of that building means there's some serious deception working. But too much of what we do is how can I get more? But the wise man said the way to get is to let go. The way to get is to give. I wonder if perhaps there has been a cap on God's manifestation of His power, miraculous power in the church because too much of it just benefits us. That the way to get watered is to water somebody else. That it's not to sit and wait until you get what you need and what you want, but it's to realize, you know what? I know others that have a need. And rather than me just waiting on God to give me, let me find out who I can minister to. And in the midst of ministering to someone, God is going to take care of me. Those who refresh others will also, will themselves be refreshed. I wonder what would happen, Brother Middleton, to the atmosphere of praise and worship in our church services if we walked into every service with the attitude, my praise and my worship is not just about me. But there may be somebody else that comes to that service today that the circumstances and situations of their life are such that they need something from God. They need a touch from God. They need a work of God in their life. And so I know that the Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people. So if I can just give God some place to occupy, then somebody else that needs something might get something as a result of my praise praise, but in the midst of them getting what they need, God is going to give me what I need. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. Let me just, I I, I thought I was going to touch on this later in this message, but I'll just say it now. I I feel in my spirit that God is about to release something new in this congregation over the next few weeks. Because we're about, for the next five Sundays, more than we've done in a long time, that it's not about, let's see what we can come and get. Let's see what God will do for us. I'll just go ahead and throw it all out there. I thought it was going to be at the end, but I'm going to, I'll just have to say it now. I believe, in fact, let me just be bold enough and say it this way. I prophesy that over the next five weeks, there are some people in this place that you are about to get a whole new level of healing in your life. That you are, there's some things that God's about to do in you greater than He's ever done before. 
But that's not going to come by you coming the next five weeks every service, sitting there waiting for God to give you something. It's going to come by you walking into this place with the belief that there's somebody here that needs to know today that God can help them with their grief and their loss. So if I will help create the atmosphere for God to work while God helps them with their grief, God God's going to help me with my grief. I know there's people in this place that you bat there's people battling depression. I I I there's there's going to be some people share their testimony in a couple weeks about depression. I read one of them yesterday. I read one of the summaries of the testimony yesterday and I just sat there in amazement number 1 at what God's done, but but I also was challenged by what I read. I was challenged by the fact that people come, Holy Ghost filled people come. Service after service, sit on these seats, and you've got no idea based on what you see with the natural eye what they're dealing with and what they're going through. People that walk into this place service after service and do the right thing service after service, and God doesn't seem to be doing anything for them. So it's not just people out there that need to be delivered from depression. There's people sitting in here. You're going to hear stories in a couple of weeks of people that have been sitting on these seats that have battled suicide sitting on these seats. But I believe there's going to be some people get delivered from depression in a couple of weeks that needs to be delivered. But it's not going to come by you trying to get it for yourself. It's going to be by trying to water others. And in the process of watering somebody else, you're going to get what you need. Not just people out there that have got families that are in crisis. There are marriages sitting in this place right now tonight. that You need God to do some healing and work in your relationship. Well, he hadn't done it to this point, apparently. So why don't you make up your mind, you know what, I can keep trying to hang on and get and receive. Or I can decide that he that scatters actually increases. And and, you know, the, the devil, the devil, he's, I don't mean to be trying to give him credit, but he's not stupid. He's not stupid. And you're not the only person he's used the tactic on. How can you tell somebody else, God can do that, when he's not even doing it in your life? How can you tell somebody else God will deliver them from depression and you've been under a dark cloud for months? I'll tell you how. By scattering. Because in the process of scattering, there's going to be something that comes back. The Bible says if you give, it's going to be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. The problem is I get based on the level with which I give. You reap what you sow in every aspect, not just your money. Some of you barely pay your tithes and you wonder why you barely get by. He said you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. Some of you sow sparingly in your praise and in your worship. Some of you sow sparingly in your prayer. There is a principle. You get to the level that you sow. But oh God, what could happen in this place collectively and what would happen if in our lives individually if we would decide, you know what, where can I water? Where can I scatter some seed? Where can I allow the Spirit of God to flow through me to touch somebody else? Because it's in refreshing others that I myself get refreshed. I preach to some precious people tonight that you have so fallen in the trap of the enemy because you are, you are making so many decisions in your life based on what you think is best for you and what works best for you and what's going to be best for you. You know what you're doing? You are holding on tightly. 
And you can hold on so tightly that you lose everything. Haggai chapter 1, verse number 1. I used this passage a couple of weeks ago in a service, but I'll use it again tonight. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, and the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie in waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages earneth wages to put into a bag of, with holes. Some of you here tonight know what it's like to get a raise. And you get that raise with the expectation, well, things are going to get a little bit better now and not ever experience one single bit of relief. Because God, not the devil, God, just so has a way to decide, you know what, you want to put your stuff first. You want to keep yourself first. I have a way of not even letting you enjoy the increase that you get. Will God do that? Sure. Because he's so unkind? No. Because he's so loving. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Anybody been rebuking the devil, 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 and rebuking the devil some more? And nothing has changed? Problem is you can't rebuke God. You can't rebuke God. And some sometimes God decides he's so desperate for you to be a part of what he has and to experience what he wants to do in and through you that he becomes your enemy. He says, I did blow on it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because mine house that is waste and you run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Jameson Fawcett and Brown says, The Lord has a thousand ways of taking away from the selfish steward of God's property the wealth which he uses not for God's glory, namely sickness, fire, death, etc. God has a thousand ways of taking from you what belongs to him, even if you don't want to give it willingly. Well, Brother Wright, I got needs. I got needs, brother, right? I got, I got issues. I got things I got to deal with. I got things I got to take care of. I can't afford to let go. And God's saying, you can't afford to hold on. Because the only way I can open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you is for you to release what you have. All it took was five loaves. Not big loaves. Five rolls. Five biscuits. And two fish. Two small fish. I think I always find it kind of humorous that the scripture was made sure it added that adjective in there. Small fish. They weren't just fish. They were small fish. Five biscuits, two small fish, possibly, I, we don't know for sure, 
but I've heard it estimated that there could have easily been 20,000 people that day. It says 5,000 men. And from five loaves and two small fishes, 5,000 plus people ate. And, and here's another part that's amazing to me. They ate until they were full. He didn't give them a snack. He didn't give them a pack of peanut butter crackers and a juice box and say, this will hold you over. The Bible specifically says they ate until they were full. And then if that's not amazing enough, not only did they eat until they were full, they gathered up 12 baskets of leftovers. All because one little boy decided, I can keep what I have and feed myself and that's it. Or I can take what seems to be very small and scatter it and watch it increase. I believe there's some people in this place tonight that the enemy has tried to convince you all you've got is five pieces of bread and two small fish. And there's not a whole lot that can be done with that. But the Holy Ghost says, I just need you to give me what you have. I don't need you to worry about what you don't have. I don't need you to worry about what you can't do. I just need you to give me what you have. Because five loaves and two fishes in a lunchbox has the potential of feeding 5,000 plus people if it will just be released. Because when you water, you get water. When you give, he gives back. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 7. Brother Middleton quoted this during prayer. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of may be of God and not of us. Some of you can identify with these next couple of verses. We are troubled on every side. Hopefully you can say this next part, though. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. You got to identify with the dying if you want the life. You got to be willing to identify with the dying if you want to get the living. Most of us want to jump straight to the living. We don't want to deal with the dying, but he said we are always bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus so that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Listen, listen, listen to this next couple of verses. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. Anybody, you can raise your hand if you want to. Don't raise your hand if you don't want to. Run the aisles if you want to. I don't care. Anybody ever feel like it's one problem, one challenge after another in your life? Why should you expect anything else? You are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. But why? So that the life also 
of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh so that the life of Jesus we're always being delivered unto death so that the life of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. Oh, hallelujah. This next part is what is supposed to give us some consolation in always being delivered unto death. So then death worketh in us, but life in you out there. So then death works in me as pastor of this congregation so I can deliver a word that life will work in you. So then death works in a deacon so that life can then be delivered to somebody else. Well, that's not what I signed up for. I don't think he asked if you wanted that or not. You need to read the fine print. We, having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe. And therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall, be, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. For all things are for your sake. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. i got to find me a preaching church somewhere. I, I'm starting to wonder if this is much of a preaching church anymore. Y'all are sitting staring church. We may have to get you up here help me out see if we can get a little bit of life in here. For which cause we faint not. Because of what I just read, we faint not. For though our outward man perish, though our outward man perish, Though the circumstances around me may not be good, though the situations in my life may not be going the way I want them to, though the pain in my body is not what I want to deal with, though the money in my bank account is not as much as I want, though the house that I'm living in is not where I want to live, though the car that I drive is not what I want to drive, though my kids are losing their mind. Not mine, somebody else is just saying Though the outward man, I know, I know a bunch of you are about to snicker at me. That's okay. Go ahead and do it. Because some of you got me by 30, 40, 50 years. But I'm telling you what, this getting old stuff is, my goodness, it's frustrating. I mean, I'm used, to, I'm used to having to decide whether or not I'm going to go play a ball game because of pain. I mean, I, okay, that's fine. Am, am I going to go play through this pain? Now I'm having to decide, am I going to sleep through this pain? I like my favorite position to sleep in is whatever side I'm on, my arm up under the pillow. I'm going on probably two years now that I can't do it on the right side. And now the last couple of weeks, the pain's starting to take over in the left side. Are you kidding? I'm trying to sleep. I'm not trying to run a marathon. I'm not trying to play football. I'm just trying to sleep. I 
I sit there and take a nap. I, I'm, I'm t- I can go to sleep anywhere. I, f- I feel sorry for y'all that can't sleep. And uh, you, you give me a few minutes to sit still somewhere, and it, it's usually over. I now sit there, and, and, and I like to fold my arms when I sleep, but now my shoulders start hurting from pulling down on each other. I'm like, are you kidding me? Though the outward man perish. I may not be able to do what I used to do. I, I, I may be losing some physical things, but in the midst of that, I don't have to lose what's on the inside because while what's on the outside may perish, the promise is that on the inside, it can be renewed day by day. The New Living Translation, verse 14, says it this way. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us when Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and present us to Himself together with you. Now listen, 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 listen. Those of you that over the next couple of weeks are going to be sharing your testimony. Those of you that won't be sharing your testimony, but everybody's got a testimony. Listen to what listen to the way the New Living Translation says it. All of this is for your benefit. What God has allowed you to go through is for somebody else's benefit. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. The Living Bible says, verse 15, this way, These sufferings of ours are for your benefit. It's not about you. Would to God. Now some of you need to take inventory because sometimes we do things and we make decisions and our actions lead to problems and difficulties. But there's also a bunch of times that it's got nothing to do with what you've done wrong. It's got nothing to do that you've messed up and God's punishing you and God's angry with you. It's got nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that what He's allowing in you is for somebody else's benefit. So that The more that are one to Christ, the more there are to thank Him for His great kindness, and the more the Lord is glorified. The more somebody else hears what God did for you, the more others are going to receive the same thing, and the more God is going to be glorified that not only has He done it in your life, but now He's done it in somebody else's life. Lastly, the Message Bible, we're not keeping this quiet, not on your life. Like the psalmist who wrote, I believe it, so I said it. We say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the Master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. Anybody here tonight that can testify that part of what built your faith was so that somebody else told you about what God did for them? Anybody else a part of your salvation process was somebody shared their testimony of how God brought them through, of how God delivered them, of how God turned their life around. You became the recipient of what God did in their life for your benefit. It's not about you. 
What would happen if we truly could change our perspective on some things? And when troubles arise, when difficulties come that are beyond our control, that we know this is not a result of my... I mean, it's, it's like you going and getting a bunch of credit cards, spending all kinds of money, and then getting upset that God's not faithful. That, that's on you. That's not on God. But, but when you know... To the best of your ability, you've been trying to follow Him and obey His Word and do what He wants you to do. And when you make mistakes, you repent and you get back up and you go on. What would happen if you started looking at the challenges and circumstances in your life and realizing, okay, my outward man's perishing, but I'm being renewed in the inward man because God is doing something in me for the benefit of somebody else. What if God's let some of you precious people go through some dark valleys of depression? Simply for the fact there's somebody else out there that needs to know I can be depressed and God can deliver me. What if God's allowed some of you to go through some very painful situations that maybe in your flesh you did not want to go through, but there was something He was using you for to produce in somebody else's life so that the glory of God and the praise of God could multiply in others because what you have now experienced, they can experience as well. You see... Oftentimes, it really is our challenges, it's our difficulties that God brings our way to simply let us know what we really do have. Famine's going on. The prophet shows up to the widow's house. She's getting ready. To make one more meal. One more meal for her and her son. And the expectation is we're going to eat it and we're going to die. But the principle is he that watereth is watered. He that refreshes others gets refreshed. And so God, through the prophet, says, instead of making that cake for you, make it for the man of God. Because what you see as being all you have left is the seed. to get you through whatever's coming. I wonder how many times we've had to walk through times of want because in the moment God put seed in our hand because all we could see is what we had and measured what we needed, we held on to it. And so we had to walk through some times of lack because the seed we were given to sow to give us, to get us through those challenging times, we held on to it. And we held on so tight that we lost. Instead of releasing, scattering, because the way to increase is to scatter. I, 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 don't, I, I know some feel differently. Maybe some of you feel differently tonight. That's your prerogative, obviously. But you know what? I, I personally love church. I love coming to church. I love being a part of the church. Not that we are the church, but I, I, like, to be a, I like being a part of church. And, and, and this, is, this is really, I guess, a little bit carnal, but, I mean, let's be honest. If we are going to come, it's nice for something to at least happen. I mean, if we are going to come and be in church, then it, it'd be nice if things would just kind of happen. 
I mean, we don't want to just sit and be bored for an hour or two hours. It'd be nice if God would move and things would happen and people would be ministered to and hopefully a word from God goes forth through a message in other ways and something happens. I mean, you know, we don't want to have to come to church and just endure to the end. But I wonder if too many times when we do come to church, it's so much about us that we never really experience everything he has because I'm just trying to get my refreshing and get what I need. And God's saying, if you will refresh others, if you'll let me flow through you to others, in the process of flowing through you to others, I'm going to water you. In the process of you scattering, I'm going to increase you. In the process of you letting go of what you have that you're trying to hold on to, I'm going to actually multiply it. And when you get done, rather than not having anything because you gave what you have, you look around and go, where did this come from? I know some of you, a lot of you here, will never stand in a pulpit and preach a message. Most of you are intelligent enough to be able to at least probably already know this and figured this out for yourself. But just in case there's some of you that still don't know it, if you think every time myself or any other preacher stands to this pulpit and they are just oozing with faith and confidence and trust in God and that everything is good, you are sadly mistaken. In fact, most of the time, You are saying one thing, and your mind is saying another thing. Did you really just say that? Did you really just tell them that? Did you forget about what you're going through? Do you forget about what you're facing? How, how could you say that? Because those that scatter, those that water, Others are then watered themselves. I know I said it already, but I'm going to say it again as I close. I believe in my spirit that God is about to take us to another level. If we will truly get our focus off, there's going to be times, I'm sure, over the next five weeks, you're going to come into church you come here on Sunday morning or when we gather on Sunday night, that there's going to be problems and difficulties in your life. There's going to be needs going on in your life that you need God to do something and intervene. But I believe that if you will make up your mind for the next five weeks, and when the five weeks is over for the rest of our lives, short term, then long term, but if we will make up our minds that I'm going to push past what I'm going through, I'm going to look beyond the pain and the suffering and realize that while I may be experiencing death, it's so that life can be working in somebody else. And that if I will look to refresh others, in the meantime, God is going to refresh me. That if I will choose rather than to hang on to what I have tightly and not let go, if I will release, I'm not going to lose. I'm actually going to increase. I know, I know to the natural mind that doesn't make any sense. You don't give away and then end up with more. You don't give and let go 
and end up with more than you started with. But that's the natural. In the spiritual, it works much differently. The Bible says, I believe it's somewhere in the book of Job, that the rain that comes down is in accordance to the vapor that goes up. So if you liken that to the vapor being our praise and worship, what comes down is in response to what is sent up. But I don't think I'm the only one tonight that has ever experienced that the rain that comes down is never equal to the vapor that I sent up. What God gives back is never equal to what I gave. But God always pours back on me way more than what it is I sent up. Because I remind you there is a principle and it's not just about money that you cannot outgive God. You cannot give of yourself. You cannot give of what you have to others and God sit back and be a debtor to you that whatever you give, God is going to give back in exceeding and abundance to what you gave. I want you to stand if you would. I, I know I know what time it is. But I want to I want to give an altar call tonight. Here's here's the altar call. Once again, I know many of you have done this many times in your life. But in this moment tonight, once again, God, what I have doesn't belong to me. You fill in the blanks because I mean it in every single way you can think of. Your finances, your time, your energy, etc., etc., etc. It's not mine, God. And rather than me trying to hang on tightly and keep it for myself, I'm going to scatter with the expectation that it's through scattering that I actually increase. That it's through my giving of what I have. It's through my letting go of what I have that I actually in return receive. It's the going through the circumstances and challenges and valleys and difficulties that I'm facing that through that, somebody else is going to experience and know the power of God. And the glory of God, the praise of God is going to be multiplied because the things that I'm going through, the things that I've been through. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, God, you know it goes against our human nature. Our human nature is we want to hang on, we want to hold on, we want to keep for ourselves what we have. But the principle of the kingdom, the principle of your kingdom, God, is that I've got to let it go for it to be given back. I've got to release it so that I don't lose it. God, I pray that you would help us tonight. I pray, God, that a fresh and a new upon this congregation would come the attitude and the spirit that it's not just about me getting watered it's not just about me getting refreshed it's not just about me getting what I need but it's about others receiving what they need it's not just about me getting a touch from you it's about 
me helping to create the environment, the atmosphere, so that somebody else can get from you what they need, God. In the name of Jesus, use me to water. Use me to water someone else, God, because it's in that process that I get what I need. Use me to speak a word of encouragement to somebody else because it's in the giving of that word of encouragement that I will receive encouragement. Use me to speak a word of hope to somebody else because it's in the speaking of the word of hope to somebody else that I in return receive hope. Why don't you make up your mind to give to somebody else what you have need of? Why don't you make up your mind to give to somebody else what you have need of? And then watch God in return give you what you need. Are you discouraged? Give somebody else a word of encouragement. Are you battling doubt? Speak a word of faith to somebody else. Are you battling fear? Speak a word of faith to somebody else. Use me, Lord. Refresh somebody else and watch God refresh you. Refresh somebody else and watch God refresh you in return. God, let there be a spirit of scattering in our midst. Not a spirit of holding on and keeping and controlling, but let there be a spirit of letting go and releasing what we have to you, God. Trusting you that you're going to give in return, God. Trusting that if I will build your house, if I will work for your kingdom, you're going to take care of my house. In the name of Jesus. It's all about you. It's not about me. Help us, God, not to be containers that possess what you give. Help us not to be containers that simply hold on and store what it is you give. But let us be conduits that you can flow through. Let us be conduits through which your spirit can flow to somebody else. And in that flowing through us to somebody else, we can receive what it is we have need of. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I give you all of me. Help us not to measure what you can do by what we have. Help us not to judge what you can do, God, by what we have. I give you all of me. We may just have five loaves and two small fishes. But that's all you need. That's all you need to scatter. That's all you need to start with to multiply, to meet a need that is far above and beyond what we think we are ever able to meet. Use my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Use my life. Take my hands, fill my mind, hold my heart, use my life. Take my hands, your grace, God. Fill my mind, by your grace, God. Use my We're not gonna hang on to what you give us. Fill my mind. By your grace, we're not going to take ownership of it, God, but we're going to give it away. We're going to give to others what you have freely given to us. That the praise and the thanksgiving might redound for many. That it might be multiplied in the lives of others. Because we've taken what we have and we've shared it. Use me, Lord. Hear my plea. In the name of Jesus.
us in the name of I Jesus. Use me, Lord. I give you all The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. It might not seem like much to me, God. It might not look like very much when I'm holding on to it, but when I release it to you, when I turn it over to you, God, it's more than enough. You're able to multiply it to do things far above what I have ever imagined you could do. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I give you all of me. Use me, Lord. Hear my plea. I give you all of me. 